the YouTube Livestream API kind of sucks. If you're used to watching some Twitch channels, you often see they have these impressive setups where the Livestream chat can interact with physical objects on the stream in real time, and I wanted to see if I could achieve similar with the YouTube API directly on an Arduino. And spoiler alert, it's never going to be as good as Twitch, but I wrote a library for it, and despite the API's suckiness, it can be used to build some interesting things. In this video, I'm going to show you some of the methods and tricks I use to make the library actually usable, including presumably straight up abusing the API's terms of service. Working with the YouTube Livestream API is most useful if you are a YouTuber who livestreams, but the approaches and techniques I use could be applied for other use cases too. I recently showed this traffic light project on a MakerCast where people could type a message to change the light. The biggest challenge to get it working was the API response for the live chat is really big, and this is a problem if you're working on a device like the ESP8266 or ESP32 which have very little memory. The key pieces of information we need from the live chat is who posted the message and what they said. But in order to get this information, the YouTube API represents each chat with this. While this is a lot of pieces of data we don't need, this normally wouldn't be too much of an issue, but the minimum number of live chats you can ask the API to return is 100, and 100 of these is a problem as it would require too much memory to be parsed. Luckily for us, as I covered in my Arduino JSON video, the library recently added an option to filter the data before it's parsed. This means we can remove all the data points we don't need. Even when comparing against the final version of the filter that I used, which contains information about super chats and super stickers, it reduces the memory consumption to less than one fifth of what it needs without the filter, which is much more manageable for us on an Arduino style board. Even with this memory saving, a hundred of these messages is still a lot to handle memory-wise, so to manage this I make use of a callback. The majority of the time when you get a message, you don't really want to keep it around. You either display it to a screen, or check if it's a command for your traffic light, and then you're done with it. You never need it again. So rather than allocating each of these a hundred messages their own piece of memory, the messages are returned one by one to you in the sketch via the callback, which is just a function you pass into the library. From this callback you can display the data or do whatever else you want with it. Okay, so the next thing we need to sort out is, in order to make the request to get the live chat from the API, we need to pass in a live chat ID, and this is unique to each stream. This isn't really a big deal as we can use the API to get the live chat ID if we supply the video ID which you can see in the URL of the stream. But the problem is if you have a device like the traffic lights that you just want to work anytime you stream, you don't want to be manually updating the code with the video ID each time as that changes with every stream too. So again you can make another API call that uses the channel ID which will never change to get the video ID of any live streams on the channel. Okay, so now we use the channel ID to get the video ID, and then we use the video ID to get the live chat ID, and then we can use this to get all the messages. A bit complicated, but it works, right? Yes, but also no. The issue is the first call that converts the channel ID to the video ID. The device will not know when the channel is going to be live, so it basically constantly makes this call till it returns you a video ID, which will happen when the channel is live. Hey, you could use that to check if your favourite YouTubers are live. Except in reality you can't. The call to convert the channel ID to the video ID uses 100 credits, and you only get 10,000 a day. This means you can only check every 15 minutes to stay within your credit limit, but that's for one channel. Two channels would be every 30 minutes, and so on. I have no idea why this is so expensive. To give some context, as mentioned, the channel ID to the video ID costs 100 credits, but the call to convert the video ID to the live chat ID costs 1 credit. So this makes the API basically unusable for this part as it would burn through your credits just checking if your channel was live. 
so we need to get creative. As covered in a previous video, it is possible to scrape the data directly from a web page. So what I do is I scrape the channel's YouTube page and basically search for this number of people watching element. And if that exists, I know the channel is live and I can even extract the video ID from here too. So we can skip that expensive call altogether. And since we don't have the shackles of the API anymore, we can actually build that device for checking when streamers you watch are live. This takes a list of YouTubers and checks a different channel every few seconds to see if they are live. This is built using my open source D1 Mini TFT shield, but you could build it by connecting an ST7789 display to any ESP8266. And for a real step up in impressiveness, Josue Alejandro also made this amazing display using his SPI display array board that he sells on Tindy. Just remember that scraping data from a web page like this should generally only be used as a last resort, as it's very fragile. If YouTube changes something about their web page later, this might stop working. Okay, so we have a solution for checking when the channel is live and getting the info we need to get the live chat data. But one thing we haven't talked about is how many credits checking the chat uses. The API documentation doesn't list any credit amount for the live stream chat API, which makes sense. This is something that you would want to check a lot, so it's obviously free, right? <sighs> From experimenting with the API, it seems like each call costs five credits, which sounds like you'd burn through it pretty quickly if you're constantly checking. But don't worry, Big YT has our back here too, as part of the response when getting the chat is a polling interval, which tells you how long you need to wait before the next request, and this is usually about five seconds. This interval is one of the big reasons it will never be as good as the Twitch implementations, as there is always a possibility of up to a five second delay. This doesn't even seem to be a limitation of the API, as while testing, I've often seen messages on the ESP32 before I even see them on the web page, so the web page must have the same limitation. This works out that you can basically check chat every 5 seconds for just over 2 hours before you run out of credits. But live streams can often last longer than 2 hours. Bitlooney streams on a second channel for about 11 hours at a time, so what do you do then? The solution I came up with for this is, when you're getting an API key from Google, you first create an application and the API key lives under that. The thing is, the quota is based on each application, so we can actually just create multiple applications, each with their own API key. I've added support to the library for accepting an array of API keys that the library will cycle through every time it makes a request, and this will spread the quota load across all your keys. Basically, you will need an API key for every two hours you think you will stream for. If you had 12 API keys, you would be completely covered as the quota usage resets every day. It is possible to request a larger quota from Google, but I don't see any information on whether it costs money or what the criteria is for getting this larger quota. So what would you build with this? My original reason for wanting to make this at all was I thought it would be useful if people could notify me by lighting an LED on my desk or something if I wasn't sharing my screen, or what I was working on was out of camera frame or something like that, and if I was feeling particularly brave, I could maybe even allow my mods to change the OBS scene directly from my chat, although I've never felt that brave yet. The traffic lights thing was just a proof of concept where I took something I made for my kids and added the ability for the viewers to change it by issuing commands, but there has to be more exciting things we can do. John Oxer of Superhouse TV had a project he showed previously that fired a party popper every time the stream got a super chat. Uh, donate a couple of dollars to Brian's channel, use the super chat or the super sticker, and we'll see if anything happens. <laughs> 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 At the time, he was using a Raspberry Pi behind the scenes, but we could now move that logic directly to something like an ESP32. We discussed on the MakerCast the possibility of making some form of a game for the chat to play, but just remember that it can't be anything real-time because of that up to 5 second delay, but you could play something turn-based. Maybe something like Twitch Plays Pokemon, but on a real Game Boy controlled by servos? 
I also really like the comment by Electron Ash about a smoke machine based on super chats. That could be really fun. Let me know your ideas below. You'll find instructions on how to use the library in the description, and you'll find a link to any projects I've shown here too. A huge thanks to my GitHub sponsors for helping support the channel and my efforts to create useful open source libraries for Arduino. Slán! So